Okay? The Grand Pyramid of Giza is made of 2,300,000 stones. 2,300,000 stones. It stands at 481 feet of altitude. Its base is uh, 13 square ac acres. 13 square acres. That is extremely large. When you take survey pictures, satellite picture of the apex of the Grand Pyramid at Giza, it is one quarter of an inch off the center of the base, that's 13 square acres. 13 acres square. One quarter of an inch off center. That's after placing 2,300,000 stones that you have cut with copper tools. <laughs>
Uh, well, you know, it's whatever gets you through the night, isn't it, ultimately? <laughs> well, no. I mean, uh, for me, what matters is the truth. The scientific truth. Uh, what, el what other truth is there when we're talking about the universe, when we're talking about the nature of life? But of course, there are other sorts of truths like moral truths, or maybe they're not truths at all, but they're, they're not scientific. But I think if we're talking about the universe, about what reality is, about what life is, then truth means something. During the last 30 years or so, scientists have discovered that the existence of intelligent life depends upon a delicate and complex balance of initial conditions simply given in the Big Bang itself. We now know that life prohibiting universes are vastly more probable than any life permitting universe like ours. How much more probable? The answer is that the chances that the universe should be life permitting are so infinitesimal as to be incalculable and incomprehensible. For example, Stephen Hawking has estimated that if the rate of the universe's expansion had been smaller by even one part in a hundred thousand million million, the universe would have re-collapsed into a hot fireball. Brandon Carter has calculated that the odds against the initial conditions being suitable for later star formation, without which planets could not exist, is one followed by a thousand billion billion zeros, at least. PCW Davies estimates that a change in the strength of gravity or of the weak force by only one part in 10 to the 100th power would have prevented a life-permitting universe. There are around 50 such quantities and constants present in the Big Bang which must be fine-tuned in this way if the universe is to permit life. You find that this argument of design is, is so conspicuous, it's staring and glaring in one's nose, yet you simply say, well, this is just to be discarded as just a mere existence of some primordial soup that came into existence out of nothing with nothing, by nothing, through total probabilistic game, uh, which is absolutely impossible, impossible from all standards uh, of logic and reason, as we would say. So the interesting fact is that, yes, reason is a necessary entity, but something that is so prevalent, that is so clear about, about the system of design in the universe, and to reject it and simply say that it has no purpose, no design, no meaning, it just came out of, a, out of nothing, going nowhere, with no meaning, I think that is really, really stretching the, uh, um, the issue way beyond reason. It becomes totally unreasonable. I would like to come back to an earlier point, if Please. I may, too, and that is the notion that atheists are somehow the intelligentsia among us and so forth. I think this is just completely false. The spate of new books published by the new atheists like Harris and Hitchens and Dawkins and so forth are not sophisticated books intellectually. These are for the most part angry, uh, bitter diatribes against religion. And while someone like Dawkins may be a good scientist in his field, when he begins to talk about philosophy and theology, he is merely a layman. And The God Delusion is a very unsophisticated book intellectually. As a philosopher, I, I was just appalled at the arguments he gives in that book. Uh, it is an embarrassment, really, I think. Well, I, I can agree, and I, I suspect uh, Michael may, may as well. I think he would, too. It, it, the, if you look at the reviews, uh, this man is, is respected in his field. Yes. But this book, if you look at the reviews, they're, they're quite damning. I used to work with Chris Hitchens. He's a bright guy. He's a fun guy. This is not a, a profound book. It, it's a fun book in many ways. So I think most people would agree that the three you mentioned in particular, Dawkins, Harris, and Hitchens, what they've written is not first-class scholarship. This has been pointed out by Frank uh, Tipler and John Barrow in their book, The Anthropic Cosmological Principle. They list ten steps in the evolution of Homo sapiens, each of which each of which is so improbable that before it would have occurred by chance alone, the sun would have ceased to be a main sequence star and incinerated the earth. They estimate the evolution of the human genome, are, are, are the odds of this are somewhere between 4 to the negative 180th power to the 110,000th power and 4 to the negative 360th power to the 110,000th power. So if evolution did occur, it would literally be a miracle.
and therefore evidence for the existence of God.